All right, so in this video, we're going to be talking about how to plot regions on the complex plane. So we have talked about how to plot complex numbers. So we know if we have an imaginary axis and a real axis, then a complex number is essentially a quantity that will have both a real part and an imaginary part, A, B. And basically the way we plot is we draw a little pole or a little line segment from the origin to that. And basically that's saying that that's equivalent to a circle of radius equal to the magnitude of that complex number. So it's a complex number set. Now, what happens when we're given something like this? So let's say we have the following expression. Set is equal to 4. <clears throat> now, that's a very interesting concept because what, does, what do these two bars represent, really? Well, what they represent is the magnitude of that complex number. And we know that the magnitude of a complex number is going to be a squared plus b squared. And then the other side is going to be equal to 4. And now if we rewrite this as equal to 4 squared, we notice something very peculiar about this. What is this actually? This is the formula of a circle, right? We have this is the same as x and y, and this is the radius of the circle is 4 now because we have radius squared. Now this is a really interesting notion. So if we wanted to plot this on the complex plane, so we, we have real and imaginary where will we plot this well it's centered at the origin of course and then it has radius 4 so we're going to have 4 minus 4 minus 4 and 4 so now that we have this we're actually going to have to form we're going to have a circumference that's going to span all those four points and I apologize for this drawing it's really hard to draw circles on this tablet but essentially we have this uh, circle here and this is telling us that we're going to plot all the numbers all the complex numbers that lie on that circumference so this is just made up of complex numbers and you can imagine that if you plot the poles it, it would fill the fill out the whole area but in essence this is what it means we have this magnitude so we're going to plot it that's essentially just a circle on the complex plane now that's a really interesting thing but what if we were interested instead in something like this let's say we want the magnitude to be less than 4 alright so it's going to be the same thing we're going to have a circle but now we want the values of this particular expression to be less than 4 so how do we draw that well we remember from plotting regions on the real plane it's going to be a circle on the real plane that when you have something less or greater than some value then you need to draw a dotted line and because we're in we're less than four so that means that anything that is radius less than four that means that we're going to shape the region inside so this is going to be four minus four minus four and four here real imaginary axis so this is essentially our region set is less than 4. And notice that we don't need to know what the actual values of that complex number are. We don't need to know what the real part and the imaginary part are because all we care about is what the region looks like in terms of this limit. So this is going to be the region because remember this is going to include all the complex numbers that lie within here. So we might have something like minus 1 and 1. That's one of the possible complex numbers we can have. And that's going to lie within this region and same with something like 2 minus 2 and so on so anything that you can fit into the circle is going to be contained within that region and that's what this essentially means and if we had the opposite of this so let's say we had set is greater than 4 then you know that we would just draw the same dotted circle but now the region lies outside, so we're taking all the numbers, all the complex numbers that lie outside that region. So now region is going to be going to infinity, and we, we're going to exclude all the complex numbers that lie within this circle. And also the ones that lie on top of that circumference, because remember it's greater than 4, so we're excluding the ones that are exactly on that circumference as well. So this is just some uh, how you plot regions on the complex plane and I'm gonna show you a few more examples on how this works so uh, as you may imagine yes in when plotting regions on the complex plane you're mainly limited to circles so a region will be denoted by a circle because by definition that's what a complex number is a complex number has a magnitude and that magnitude represents the radius of a circle around it so 
let's do a few more examples just to get you a little bit of, uh, of an idea of how this is going to work. All right, so let's have the complex number or the region set minus one is less or equal to two. So let's have that. All right, that's a, that's a little bit of a complicated one because, okay, we haven't dealt with this before. What is this going to be like? Well, let's, let's expand this out. What's this going to be? We have a real number here, which means that this real number ha it has to be taken into account into the real part of this set number. Because remember, this is just like adding two complex numbers together. So this is going to be like this. This is going to be um, whatever the real part of that set number is minus one squared that's going to be the real part of this larger complex number and then we're going to have b plus zero because this number here has essentially imaginary part zero and this is going to be equal to two so in the end we're going to end up with a minus one squared plus b squared equals to two squared and if you notice that's also the equation of a circle but now we have some shift along the real plane, uh, along the real uh, axis. So we have the real axis, the imaginary axis. So now we have a shift. So when is this become zero? This becomes zero at one. So basically, what we're going to have here is we're going to have this circle that is centered at one and has radius two. So this is going to be minus one here, three here, two, minus two. And we want it to be less or equal than two, so we're going to include the circumference in it. So we draw a shaded circumference, so just a solid line. And now, so the radius is two. And less or equal, so we're going to shade the area inside of the circle. So that's going to be a region. That's going to be a region here. Now let's have another example. Let's say we have, let's say we have set minus 3 plus i is greater or equal to the following let's just have one let's have a unit circle all right so what does this look like well we're going to have the same procedure as before we're going to group the real and the imaginary parts together so this is going to be a minus 3 squared plus b plus i squared equals to one sorry and then we're going to have a minus three squared plus b plus i squared one squared so that's radius one so now we have another complex number but now we have another shift we're going to shift it to the right by three units right so we're going to shift it to the right by three units and i'm going to try to draw it here a little bit bigger so you can visualize it so that's imaginary real so let's have one two and three that's this um center along that and then we're going to shift it by one in the opposite so we're going to have minus one in on the imaginary axis because we want this to go to zero so that's going to be centered here and the radius is going to be one so that's going to be two here four so we're going to have the following and we want to include the solid line, so the solid line is going to be this. We're including all the numbers that lie on that circumference. Like that. And then we want all the values that are greater than that. So basically all the values that lie outside that circular area. Circular area. So our region is going to be this, so this is going to be denoted by set minus three plus i greater equal to one so this is now what we have so this is just to, to give you a general idea of what plotting complex regions on the complex plane looks like and you're usually going to have shapes like this what you want to do is you want to expand this out whatever whatever expression is given here between those um magnitude or or those like straight bars on the top it's not absolute value it's just it just means the magnitude of that complex number and what you do is you're going to group the real parts and the imaginary parts together in here 
and then basically you just try to derive the equation of a circle from that and this the sign here is what's going to tell you what the region is so if it's greater or equal than one that means that you have to shade all the region that is outside of it because we're including all the numbers that are that lie outside that circle there and because it's equal to one as well you include all the all the numbers that lie on that circumference as well so this is just a general idea this will become quite handy when we do complex integration because when you do complex integration so let's say you have a function of a complex variable set and you want to integrate with respect to some particular region or path c it's important to know that um, its equivalent form in in real functions would be to integrate from a particular from a particular limit a to b so that's what defines that but in in complex integration you need a region of integration to be defined otherwise you cannot really find a um, a solution for that so what you would do is you would take this region for example let's say you have this region and you will only integrate all the all the numbers that lie within that region so if you have some expression like for example some function of set over set minus one then that means that the only number that the only number that would lie within that is set equals to one so with that you can simplify this greatly and there, there are formulas for using this to your advantage so that you can evaluate this type of integral based on that region because if this lies within the region then we get a specific value for that if it doesn't lie within the region then the value of this integral just goes to zero and that's a really neat property that we will explore in later videos but for now just remember this is how you plot complex regions on the complex plane and in the next video we can finally get started on defining what com uh, functions of a complex variable are and we'll do some exercises on those